This is Sonic, and you're watching JD Frank 20. You see, this is why critic r reviews are fucking stupid. When you look at Rotten Tomatoes, why do they even exist? These guys are just as bad as IGN when it comes to reviewing movies. Like I said, the audience score is what matters the most. And if we're getting at least above an 88 or higher, that means something's done right. Yeah, even the Mario movie got uh, got a bad review on Rotten Tomatoes. And once again, the cr fans have to say, these critics, why do we even have them? Yeah, so, yeah, so the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, I'm going to say I enjoyed the hell out of the movie. I'm not going to lie. You know, the movie, you know, like I said, I watched this movie without knowing the lore and everything. I wanted to jump in this movie with no spoilers, no nothing. And again, I'm watching it not only as a casual perspective, but also as a storyteller to see what direction the story's going to go in. And yeah, let's get to work. So basically, uh, Mike, obviously, who's the main protagonist in this movie... Uh, apparently, you know, he has to he has to basically work as a security guard at Freddy's Pizzeria, an establishment that was shut down in the 1980s because obviously there were some kids disappearing. And then when you find out later what truly happened or what the intentions were, you realize, wow, that sent shivers down my spine of what happened. Yeah, the plot for this movie, I mean, for what they had to offer, it worked. Again, this movie is a thriller, but it also is suspenseful. They keep you guessing, you know, like you think... Oh, what's going to happen next? You know, like, who's the real bad guy in this movie? That doesn't happen until, like, late in the movie. You know, but they give you hints. They give you Easter eggs. Again, like, if you're watching this as a casual, you don't know who these characters are. But if you're watching it as a hardcore of the franchise and know the lore, you realize, oh, okay, they're teasing this, they're teasing that. I love it. I love the direction they're going in. Yeah, so that's pretty dope right here. So basically, Mike, the reason why he took this job as a security guard, because again, you know, he has to basically uh, pay the bills. And obviously, after getting seen that uh, eviction notice on his house, he doesn't have a choice. Uh, he was hesitant at first uh, where he was offered the job. This was after he uh, apparently uh, chased someone down in the mall and beat and beat them up brutally. That's because Mike's been having psychiatric problems as a lot of those visions come into play in the entirety of the movie. My biggest concern about the movie was how are they going to get someone like me as a casual care about Mike, who's basically, you know, unlikable when you think about it. I mean, his sister, Abby, I mean, I like her character the way she was introduced. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's got to take care of his uh, younger sister. But at the same time, he has no job. And at the same time, you have his aunt who wants to take him away from him, basically. And Mike doesn't want that to happen. So you realize, OK, so what, what's going to happen is... You know, she plots and scheme against Mike. She wants to do everything in her power, whatever she can, to get basically Abby away from Mike. And she said she even had to hire a bunch of others uh, to say, you know what, just get him fired from his job, vandalize the place, and that's it. He'll get fired. He can't make a case for the, in front of a judge, and I'll win. And I'll win Abby easily, and Mike loses. Well, let's just say that you know, for me, I actually found her to be the main antagonist of the movie. I'm not gonna lie; I did not like her whatsoever. I kept saying to myself, "Man, that bitch is gonna get her come up in soon," which she did. Unfortunately, you know, when when she was killed off, it was an off-screen death. I would have preferred if it was an on-screen death. I would have preferred if her head was cut in half or her body was cut in half, just like that other chick, like uh, during that one during the break-in scene where all those bastards were fucking killed by all the animatronics. And I love that part of the about the movie. You know, again, it was all justified, by the way, they're trespassing. The first hour, hardly nothing happens. You just get a lot of backstory from Mike. And then, of course, Vanessa comes into play, who's, who's a uh, who's a police officer, you know. And, of course, she has a fond connection towards that pizzeria because, of course, you know, because of memories in the past. But then you later find out that she was actually in on it. You know, she knew the true horrors of that restaurant. And then Mike's saying, like, why didn't you tell me any of this? And the second or third night when Abby's actually on uh, there because her previous sitter is actually, well, dead. So Mike had no choice but to bring her uh, to his job because he didn't have a choice. He was hesitant at first. And then in the third night, you realize, you know, she was surrounded by the animatronics thinking that they were going to kill her. But in fact, they were just having fun with her. They were just playing. And then you realize the animatronics have a gentle side. And I thought at this part of the movie, I said to myself, maybe Abby has a spiritual connection with them in a way, which she did. But at the same time, you realize, no, these are these are souls of children that were murdered who are controlling the animatronics. They just want someone new who who they can relate to, which is Abby, because Abby's character, she's she's basically just she just draws pictures and she's basically, you know, 
she's she's not sociable in a way so they could kind of relate to her they want her to be like them and at one point you know you realize you know she was going to become a robot at one point so mike was able to make the save obviously but that was because vanessa was the one who told them how to basically neutralize the animatronics use electrical devices but of course there was one main uh true villain at the end where, where that would have no effect and he's the one who's been pulling the strings all along but at the end of the day, you know, the movie had, you know, offered what it offered. You know, it kept you in suspense. It was a thriller. You never knew what, what was going to happen. But I, I was surprised that for a movie like this, they were they were using a lot of blood, actually. And they were flat out murdering people, too. Like, that's amazing. Like, the fact that they have these robots actually murdering people, that's that's badass right there. I'm not going to lie. I can't wait to see what the sequel is going to offer. I'm not going to lie. You know, and again, you know, I love the fact that the Five Nights at Freddy franchise, just like Mario, just like Sonic, they're getting a, a proper sequel where Sonic is getting a trilogy, actually. So, again, this is what we want. They set the standard, actually. This is video game adaption to, to cinema done right. I love this. Couldn't be more excited. And not only that, man, it distracts us from all the crap from DC and Marvel because all those movies are oversaturated, they're played out, and they're woke as fuck. I'm not going to lie. I hate watching Marvel movies because of how woke they are. I hate watching DC movies because they have no creativity, and the DC franchise is dead. When it comes to movies like Mario, when it comes to movies like Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, or even Five Nights at Freddy's, I'll put my time into watching those series because at least you know you're getting something authentic. And they actually care when it comes to making the product. The fact that they were able to do this under a $20 million budget is amazing. So my score would be a 9 out of 10. I'm going to be honest, I would have rated it higher again if the ant would have been killed off similar by having her being cut in half just like that other broad. That's just my personal take on that. And by the way, shout outs to my friend uh, uh, Alpha Eyes who recommended I do this review. Again, you know, I was told like, hey, Frank, why don't you review the Five Nights at Freddy's movie? I mean, if you're going to review Sonic and Mario, you might as well do uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, I highly recommend it. Uh, either watch it in the theaters or you can watch it on Peacock. It's available. It's an exclusive. So, yeah, that's what I was able to watch. It's pretty cool. Again, everybody let me know what y'all thinking. I got to go. Peace out.